Yeah, dude, I can actually. Yeah. And I was slightly confused because I keep in a message that we need to get in. So um, I've literally had to log back in. So, Where are you going? All right, marvellous. Uh, hi, Frank, how are you? Hi, I'm very good. Good. But is everyone okay for the weekend? And how are things with Ben Chippewell, with Christy Pulisic, Adam Zayach, and Edward Mendy? Yeah, uh, Mendy and Chilwell are in the squad for tomorrow, so they're they're fit. Um, so we'll see uh, whether they start or not. Um, and then the other ones, uh, Zayac and Pulisic, are, uh, are not far away. They're still in their re recovery stage, so it's um, too early for them both. What have you made of him so far? What does it mean to at least have him available? Yeah, all very positive. The uh, the early signs and interactions, um, just as a man, and also on the training pitch. So he settled in very well in those few days, and uh, we've made him very welcome as, as always. Um, so yeah, no, it's uh, it's competition. He's a good goalkeeper. We know that. We we know a lot about him, and um, and we'll see how we go. But how do you go about addressing the issues that, that cost you with West Brom? They were individual mistakes, or. What can you do about that? Well, yeah, very clear individual mistakes. You can't hide from them. The players, the individuals can't. And, um, you know, that's where you just need to have um, humility and hold your hands up. And I think players did, should. Um, Thiago Silva <coughs> definitely did because that's the kind of character he is. And uh, the reason he's been one of the best in the world for the last 10 or 15 years is because he doesn't do it much. So um, we have to take the game on the chin in terms of the fact that the three individual errors gave us a real mountain to climb. The positive was that we climbed it to a degree and got a point. Uh, although we, of course, we would always want more when we have such a, a domination of a game against a team that defend. But the circumstances made it difficult, and the reaction was actually good. Last one, please, Ian. Uh, big talking point from the weekend: the new handball law, the way it's been interpreted. Steve Bruce got a penalty, said we've lost the plot. Roy Hodgson, who had a penalty given against Crystal Palace, said it was a nonsense and it's ruining the game. Is it, what are you, what's your view on it all? And is it something that collectively Premier League managers can do something about? I don't know the answer to that. I agree with both Steve Bruce and Roy Hudson in their uh, analysis of it. Um, you know, they've been in the game longer than myself, but we're all in this game and I think we all understand that when people jump in the box, your arms will naturally move into different positions. Um, it's always been a difficult rule, maybe with a certain bit of a grey area, but in the in the in the idea of trying to find some clarity, we've actually gone the other way and made it something that just doesn't feel right at all. So I'd like to think something can be done to change it. John Southall, five line. Frank, how are you doing? Hi, John. Good. How, how difficult is it to solve? Um, the issues at the back when you're you're playing twice a week um, and then next week the players will disappear on international duty you're not I presume you're not getting a great deal of time on the training ground no and um, I keep saying it and it's not I'm not pleading uh, or making excuses it's just a fact that when you work part of the reason I think we had a successful year last year was the work that we put in the, on the training ground from the, the early days of being in Dublin and then being in Japan and having weeks with the players and we were very well drilled and we, I think off the ball particularly our work was great and we made it very difficult for teams to play against us a lot. Um, when you have new players in you really want to work like that, we haven't had the chance. So not just at the back, the whole way we're playing, it needs work. Football doesn't work that you throw things together and, uh, and everything is, is amazing because otherwise we wouldn't have managers that have shown that work brings success. So we're in that process and we just have to fight through that. The same times that I mentioned last week, Barnsley being almost like an exercise for us. Now everything, every game is an opportunity for us to improve. What do, what do you make of the international break? I think they're playing, some of them are playing three games in, in under a week. I mean, as a manager, what do you, what do you make of it? Well, you, you hope, I hope that the, the international managers, and I try and have as good a relation as I can with the ones I speak to related to our players, um, will use the games as well as they possibly can with their squads that they have, because three games is a lot when you think that we're back-to-back -back at the moment and when we come back from that we'll be back-to-back -back again. I respect international football and I understand it has to be there, I just hope that the players go away and, uh, and play and come back safely. Last one, John, please. Yeah, I know we've spoken about Antonio Rudiger before, but he hasn't featured at all this season. So, um, can we assume that he is one of those players who will be on his way out? I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't assume anything, and I wouldn't assume with Antonio or any players in the squad. We're not there until 
next Monday the, when the window shuts. So uh, other than that, I would have no assumptions. James, talk sport. Hi, Frank. Can you hear me? Hi, James. I got you. Frank, what's the the latest on Kepa? Do you think he might have potentially played his last game for Chelsea? Where do you see his future, especially over the next few days? No, I certainly won't go to the point of played his last game for Chelsea. I think it's been a difficult time for Kepa. I think that's well documented. I know it and he knows it. Um, but we should certainly not jump to that conclusion. And, and also, I think, which I felt quite strongly about in the last week, is also understand that Kepa is a, is a young man. And a lot of the, he, the highlight, the spotlight on him, I think has become a slightly unfair. I, I have to protect him because I know he's a good lad and playing with absolute professionalism and intent to do the best he can. Um, as all the squad have to um, and that's as much as I want to say about it now Did you see Saturday as a bit of a reality check because you've got a lot of new players coming to the side it's going to take a little while for them to gel it's not possible for every single player to be an overnight success for, and for everyone to gel and you to get results and performances straight away Yeah it, it wasn't a reality check for me because I know that it may be for someone on the outside that's not the worst thing Listen, we, we should have won the game and would have won the game without individual errors, which are, are not all necessarily related to new players or new feeling. But in terms of our performance so far, it's clear we have some new players in. We also have a few new players in that haven't even taken part yet because of injuries. Um, so we haven't had time to train as a group. Um, I'm very confident that we, as the more we can work, the more the players can play together and feel each other and, and work on the things that we worked on a lot last year but we have to now double down on, then we will improve. But um, it wasn't a reality check, I understood that. And any Premier League game is going to give you big challenges. And West Brom gave us a challenge in the way the game went. Last one, James. Spurs got a bye into this round because Leighton Orient couldn't fulfil that fixture last week. Did you think that was fair? Do you think this game should have maybe been postponed so a club like Leighton Orient could have got a big day out with a, a big TV audience and the money that would come with that as well which I imagine would have come in handy at this time of year Yeah I have, I have absolute sympathy for Leighton Orient you know, it's an area that I know very well um, I'm really still sympathetic to them but unfortunately in the time that we're at even I looked at it from our point of view and I, I thought that the game might be changed and there, there's no way to put that game for us if we were going to uh, postpone that game because as soon as we come back from international duty we go league Champions League league Champions League um, so it's very unfortunate for Leighton Orient um, and I think I don't know the details but I think it seemed like the, the best solution and maybe they've missed out and that, let's hope that they can be have been or can be compensated in some way to make up for that Jerry Cox Hi Frank um, this Hi, is Jim. the second of four games in a week for Spurs and Jose's hinted the Carabao Cup's probably his least important or lowest priority does that make you favourites and, and where does it rank in, in Chelsea's ambitions this season? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know that and I know, Joe, it's a busy time for Tottenham because of the Europa League. It's a busy time for us all. You know, they had a free midweek last week. Uh, we didn't, um, but I know they have a busy week this week. But when I analyse Tottenham and know the squad they have and analyse what might be a team that, that maybe didn't play 90 minutes pretty much yesterday, they have a fantastic squad. So I, I feel that any squad Jose will put out can be very strong. I think we all know the Carabao Cup for teams like ourselves and Tottenham that are challenging for top four and Champions League, like we are. Um, then the Carabao Cup does have its place, but we certainly respect it and um, every tournament we go in, we'll try and win. Last question, Jim Conman. Hello there, uh, Frank. Uh, in relation to Callum Hudson and Dye, he made a big uh, contribution there at the weekend, uh, Callum Hudson and Dye. And do you think maybe going forward, uh, Callum is going to have a big part to play in the season uh, with the likes of uh, Hakem Ziyech and Christian Pulisic uh, coming back from injury? And also, what does the future entail for Victor Moses? He had a successful and offload spell at Inter Milan. He's going to be back in. Is he going to play a part for you this year, Victor Moses? Yeah, at the moment, Victor isn't in that position with us. We have a, a bubble, the training ground and the first team squad, which Victor hasn't been part of, but I know Victor having played alongside him and know him well, and we'll see how that develops uh, over the next week. Um, with uh, Callum, yeah, I certainly hope he has a big part to play this season. Um, when you talk about Zayech and Pulisic, we, we are not inundated with wingers. We lost Pedro and William in the, in the summer and we'll need competition, we'll need players just because of the stress of playing and the competitions we have to play in. 
Um, and if Callum comes on and makes impacts like he did at West Brom, if he keeps improving and developing every day, he's a huge talent. So let's see.